Hi, 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 Janky Steve here, the long-haired freaky dude. Today I'm reviewing Book 5 of Euclid's Elements, translated by Thomas L. Heath. There was a huge transition here from the last four books. Where the first four dealt with principles, properties, and constructions of shapes, Book 5 deals with the principles of ratios and some of the properties and principles of multiplication. Coming into this book was very intimidating, and I had no idea what the heck was going on. Not only is there a complete shift in subject matter, meaning that the proofs are going to be structured differently, but many new definitions were introduced with a lot of big words and a lot of Latin words. Couldn't you have translated those for me? I don't speak Latin. I wish I could, but you don't need to make me feel bad about not being able to, Thomas L. Heath. Like, I got really scared whenever I seen that there were 18 new definitions, each taking up four to five lines of text each all containing mind-numbing words like magnitude, multitude, exequality, antecedent, perturbed proportion. I didn't know a proportion could be perturbed. What does a proportion have to be perturbed about? <laughs> I guess its own existence. But I mean, those type of words are enough to bring any man to his knees. I read through the definitions and I didn't understand a single one. If at any point in reading Euclid I felt like I was backing down, this was it. But I went ahead and tried Proposition 1 anyway, to see if I could by some small chance wrap my mind around it. The first proposition took about 40 minutes. It was small, not even a page, but it took that long. But finally, I understood what it was getting at and I understood how it was proved. It was a slow start but I moved on to the second proposition. It took a little less time, and finally, by proposition four, I realized that what this stuff was is actually really simple and easy. It took a little less time, and by four propositions, I realized that what this book is dealing with is actually really simple, basic stuff. I came in assuming that it was gonna be really complex, much more complex than it was, and that is what gave me the hard time, assuming that it was going to be complex. Once you can wrap your mind around the crazy words whose purpose is to convert algebra into geometry, it's really easy. Like magnitude, it essentially means size, or more simply, number. That's all it is, a number. And multitude, it's how many times that number appears. If you know simple multiplication, you can work through this book. You just need to convert your thoughts from algebraic multiplication to geometric multiplication. And I might also suggest mentally replacing some of the phrases with symbols that you're more accustomed to, such as changing is to to a colon, like A is to B is the same thing as the ratio of A to B. And beyond that, the proofs, they're very straightforward. I mean, you almost don't need to read them. You can just assume what the proof is going to be, and that's what it's going to be. Very obvious things, but nonetheless necessary to prove. So once you know all the aforementioned things, it should take you just a few minutes to work through each proposition. I mean, I draw all the propositions out, and it still only took me a few minutes per proposition. And I do highly suggest drawing these out, because it really does help with understanding and uh, memory retaining of this knowledge. If you want to see some of the propositions as I drew them out, here they are for book five. You can see a lot of words, a lot of lines with dots. That is pretty much the contents of book five. No shapes at all. And not to mention, there are many practical uses for the properties of multiplication and ratios mentioned here. What comes to my mind are different concepts in physics and how changing components of ratios affects the outcome and such. And then applying these things to understanding concepts like force and gravity. And there's many, many numerous other things these propositions can be used for. Heck, we actually use them all the time in our daily lives. What can you think of that utilizes the information from Book 5 of Euclid's Elements? And how do you think they revolutionized the ancient Greek world whenever they were discovered? Well, I'm J.K. Steve, the long-haired freak dude. Thank you for watching this video. If you like mathematical propositions or philosophy or literature or history or all that stuff, be sure to check out my channel and hit the subscribe button. If reading these type of works are your cup of tea, then might I suggest checking out the Great Book Challenge. I'm sure it's something that you would love to do. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to direct those in the comments section below. Feel free to start a discussion. Feel free to be as vulgar as you want. It is free speech down there. Well, I'm Jakey Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, y'all.